Yeah, yeah, that's pretty hot. Ooh. That lightsaber, it belongs to me. <laughs> this is highly dangerous. We are going to do a Q&A on the lightsaber. So let's get started. Let's see what, what questions there are. All right, I'll just start with some of the uh, super common questions. Are you guys going to make a Darth Maul lightsaber? Um, probably, I hope so. We want to. Why didn't you start the video with hello there? We did. I think if you, if you find, if you rewatch the video, you'll see that I did. The whole video. <laughs> Did you burn your hand or why didn't you burn your hand when, when it was caught on fire? So in that scene, I was actually wearing thick gloves and I happened to soak that glove in lighter fluid. So the interesting thing about this lightsaber is it, uh, it gets very, very hot, but it's not good at conducting the heat into something that you're burning. An example of this is take a ice cube and try to cut it with a butter knife. So the butter knife is hotter than the melting temperature of the ice cube, but it's very difficult because transferring that heat into the ice cube takes a while. Same goes with this while cutting anything. So if you're trying to cut lead or steel or aluminum, whatever, even though this is hotter than the melting point of that thing, it takes a lot of energy and to conduct that heat into the metal. Um, a little bit of background or behind the scenes kind of knowledge. The limiting factor of this saber, and actually most of our sabers, isn't actually the battery pack. Um, they actually overheat. And when I say overheat, I mean the, the handle gets way too hot to wield and we need to kind of like set it aside and let it cool down for a while. Because it's got the three blades, it, so, it just soaks the heat into the handle to the point where you spray it with water and these, these parts here boil. Uh, they, they're hotter than 100 degrees Celsius. So about tungsten, uh, I think there's some concerns about tungsten being radioactive. My understanding of, of this is that in welding electrodes, the, um, some of the tungsten electrodes use thorium, 2% thorium, and thorium is radioactive. So we're actually using pure tungsten for this application. There's no thorium at all. Um, so I'm pretty sure this is safe. I mean, aside from the uh, burn hazards. Golden Eagle asks, um, how do we plan on solidifying the plasma lightsaber? So right now we're just gonna have a jet of plasma and plasma is not a solid. So if you were to try to collide those two blades, it wouldn't work. They'd just pass right through each other. But it's a cool architecture and it's gonna burn a lot better than this. So I think it's still good enough. Next, maybe, maybe version five will get a solid plasma blade. How long will it be until plasma lightsaber is complete? Um, hopefully soon. Bogdan is working on one as we speak, so. Why did you guys choose this hilt design over the one used in the movie? Partially IP and partially because I just wanted to design this. How close would you say it is to the movies? Um, like how it cuts and looks. When you have it on, it looks and feels amazing. Um, and just the heat coming off of it is intense. It doesn't cut as well as a real lightsaber, in large part because of how just kind of physics and how heat conducts. Lightsabers will never be as good as they are in the movies, but we can try. And the next lightsaber is going to be better. You guys should check out our Instagram because we have some previews of the next plasma lightsaber. Parts alone, how much does it cost to manufacture? I think we've got about $10,000 worth of 3D printed parts here. And then in raw materials, maybe a few hundred. Tungsten can be fairly pricey. And then there's the titanium tube, switches, the sheathing. But it also took me a long time to make and labor is not free. Uh, fortunately, we didn't pay for the 3D printing. Um, as we saw in the video, the hilt was done by Renishaw. The coffer parts were done by US in Germany. Um, this part was actually done by EWI and everything was arranged by Mark Barfoot at EWI. So thanks a lot to our partners. How badly would it burn you if you just touched your hands? Um, really badly. It, it'd be very similar to just touching the elements on your stove. So like turning, turning the stove to maximum and then touching that. Um, this would, this is actually hotter, so 
The limiting factor is actually the heat transfer and I think the leader fro leader frosting leader later later Leiden frost. I can't pronounce it. Some effect that causes things to create a thing. What well, software do you use to make 3D models? SolidWorks. There's a link in the description of all the videos. Um, and actually, members and patrons get access to the CAD models, to this, and a bunch of other projects. And we also have circuit diagrams in the descriptions. But uh, damn, SolidWorks. I have to ask how much electricity bill do you get? $1,000 a month. I wish I was joking. Does it actually make that weird swoosh sound? I think he's referring to this sound effect. <laughs> the yeet, Cordy, <laughs> Corky. <laughs> this one does not. Those sound effects were added in post, uh, but our version two did, and I think our next one will as well. It's fairly easy to implement. I just didn't. You can get sound modules and speakers and things. It's, um, there's a bunch of products already out there for lightsabers that do that. Um, Boba Fett on YouTube says, in about a year, they're going to build our jetpack, my jetpack. We did build a jetpack. Um, we might make another one. I was, I was thinking about branding it Boba Fett. Sandra says, when he touched it, I was like, oh my God, what are you doing? No. Yeah, he transferred. <laughs> Jedi, let's fight. Sith, wait, it's heating up. Jedi, oh, oh okay, I'll wait. Um, yeah, it does take a while to heat up, but once it's hot, it's hot. <laughs> uh, we could we could get it to heat up faster. Um, this one was a little slower than the last ones because the, the total length of resistor was longer. If we had a more advanced control circuitry like pulse width modulation or something, we could start with a very high voltage. Once it's heated up, then we could pulse it so it doesn't overheat, um, but it was just easier to have on off. And you got a nice tan from holding that. I think it just emits mostly infrared without any UV, so um, unlike welding and some of the things like that, I don't think it's possible to get a tan. You guys are amazing and inspiring and incredible role models, but sometimes I worry you could probably take over the world. What do you want to do tonight? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. The Pinky and the Brain. What are we doing today, James? <laughs> you should go out at night with this thing and see people's reactions. Um, yeah. I mean, it's kind of, we're kind of in lockdown, so I'd have to go into people's homes. That might be awkward. Next time on Make It Real. <laughs> For the colors, you can try to contain gases like argon and neon. Um, the next plasma-based lightsaber will be able to change colors. So um, I think we've exhausted this architecture and we're going with the plasma from now on which will be retractable and burn a lot hotter and be able to change colors. Why don't we have real lightsabers? Uh, because lightsabers are fiction. Can you make a retractable lightsaber? Yes, we're working on it. Check the Instagram. Why doesn't it cut like in the movies? Uh, physics. I mean, why, why don't we have real lightsabers? Why don't we have the force? <laughs> Kyber crystals are magic. <laughs> why doesn't it cut through things like it does in the movies? Well, short answer, because of physics. Long answer, it would take an incredible amount of energy to blast through things like that. And then the other issue is heat transfer. So, no. There's also some questions about metal 3D printing. And so here's this segment here. Okay, so metal 3D printing. Yes. I know there's a bunch of different ways yep. to do it. Um, how does this machine work? So the uh, so Renshaw uses uh, laser powder bed fusion is uh, uh, what we call it. So basically, what we are doing is we are using a laser to melt um, spheroidized powder. So the, the powder is basically mini ball bearings. Yep. Uh, so we we lay a layer of powder, a thin layer between 20 to 100 microns, depending on what you're maybe trying to do. Um, the laser will melt that first layer. A slice and then the plate drops we lay another layer of powder the laser melts um, that next cross section and so on and so on and repeat you know in this case 9,000 times yeah so the reason I chose metal 3d printing for this application was um, I had a lot of complicated geometry that I wanted to achieve yep. and I'm not capable of machining that there might be someone out there that could machine that but it just seems like a perfect application to to utilize metal 3D printing. I, I also wanted to reduce the number of components 
from a design perspective, from my perspective, it's easier just to make a bunch of stuff, throw it in a 3D printer, and then it shows up. Um, yeah, and yeah. Three you can eliminate components and yeah. you don't have those joints that you necessarily maybe would have had to have machining yet. Yeah. It's a great kind of example of a, like I said, a prototype where you need mm -hmm. to have parts quickly. They're complex and they're in a material that is not typically easy to machine yeah. on some days. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've done a little bit of machining on titanium and I'd rather print it. Yes, yes, to get your shape, yeah. Some people say that if they had a lightsaber, they would play with it every single day. And while I do enjoy playing with my lightsabers, they, uh, they don't actually last that long. So they take a fair bit of maintenance. As you can see here, this one's about to break. Um, I call the blades actually, I call them consumables because every probably half an hour of runtime you have to replace them. And so half an hour isn't actually that long. You can see right here where this, this one is uh, disintegrating. But yeah, you need to replace the blades, you need to rebuild it, you need to do all sorts of maintenance, you need to charge it. They, uh, kind of a pain in the ass. <laughs> so we're actually uh, testing the new lightsaber and put a piece of titanium, that's what these blades are made out of, and it just burned right through it. Uh, it's actually quite incredible. So if we were to kind of fight with uh, new versus old, yeah, it would just melt the titanium right off of this. Thanks a lot to our Patreons and Hacksmith members. Um, without you guys, I would not be able to build this sort of thing, and I love building this sort of thing, so really appreciate it. Um, that's all for this Q&A. Until the next time, if you have any more questions, throw them in the comments. Jedi video end. <laughs> <laughs>